Hey Defenders, is your Seam stack currently capable of alerting when an endpoint establishes a network connection to an abnormal port? If not, then stick around for this video. I will show you guys how we can use Wazoo to detect when one of our endpoints has established a connection to an abnormal port. So let's jump into it. So for this video, I'm going to demonstrate on a Windows endpoint. Also, the Wazoo rule that we're going to build will be for a Windows endpoint that is also running Sysmon, which I detailed in part four of our series. Uh, so if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check that out first before progressing on to this one. So of course, a big part of our infrastructure where our servers running in a data center, or maybe this is a corporate office where employees are docking their workstations to, uh, all that involves a network, right? Uh, that is probably the most important part of anything when it comes to computing and is also a big part when it comes to security. Various users accessing boxes, uh, maybe remotely, files that are being downloaded, all of that can only take place when a network connection is established. And monitoring what your endpoints are connecting to is a imperative when it comes to understanding what's coming into your network and also what's going out of your network as well. So when it comes to this demonstration, we are going to be using a Windows endpoint with Sysmon installed. And I know network Sysmon logs network connections as an event three. And if we look at a current network connection within Grafana, we see that here we have an established network connection that went out to a destination IP of this 5.161.74.146 that went over port 22. And then the image field is another important metadata field when it comes to our Sysmon event threes, because this is actually telling us the process that invokes the network connection. So here we see, of course, this is what we would expect to see. We Port 22 is the common port for SSH. And here we see our SSH daemon establishing a connection to our 5.161 on port 22. So that all looks good. That all checks out and would not necessarily be a cause for alarm. Now, maybe if this is a Windows server in a production environment and you're seeing SSH logins go outbound of your network, then that might be something to at least take a look at. But in our case, we'll pretend that this is perfectly normal and expected traffic. And that's going to be common for other ports as well. So 443, which is going to be our HTTPS, uh, 53, port 53 is going to be DNS. Port 25, if we have some servers within our environment, uh, reaching out to mail servers to send emails. And there's a handful of other common ports that many services run on. But what would be nice is if we could trigger an alert when an endpoint has established a connection to a port that isn't necessarily common. So if we look at Trend Micro's graph here that we have on screen, this is a list of Trojans and also their ports that they have known to be associated with. So a lot of these ports you can see are very abnormal. We got 6969, nice, 7777. So like if I saw an endpoint establishing a network connection out to one of these ports, that would definitely be suspicious. That would be abnormal and would be something I would want to dig into further. And we can actually implement this logic using Wazoo CDB list and creating a Wazoo rule to do so. One thing I do want to highlight, please, 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 we I, I highly recommend implementing your firewalls to have a deny all but allow by exception approach when it comes to outbound connections from your internal network you know, to the outside world. I see time and time again where clients will not be doing any filtering on their firewall when it comes to outbound connections. Those endpoints that, okay, they get malware on there, now they're reaching out to a command and control server on an abnormal port, the firewall is going to let that through. So I always, always, always recommend having a deny all and allow by exception approach. So if you do wanna allow, let's say port 443, you implement a firewall role to do so. And going through that process of, okay, why do you need this port whitelisted on the firewall and so on and so forth, rather than letting all network traffic out, regardless of what port it is on, just because, oh, it's outbound access, it should be fine. It's nothing from the outside world trying to come in. So please don't fall victim to that. So let's now first create our CDB list. So, and a good use cases for this is for, if we want to whitelist or blacklist users, uh, file hashes, IP addresses, these lists are really cool because we can use our Wazoo rules to 
analyze the list and say, hey, if I see user Bob logged into this endpoint and user Bob is not within our approved list, then we could trigger an alert. And it's a really nice feature that is built into Wazoo. And we're going to take advantage of this list to generate our common network ports. So that'll be step one. We will then instruct the Wazoo manager to load the list, and then we will create our Wazoo rule to inversely match on the list. So let's go ahead and create our CDB list. So I'm going to go ahead and jump on my Wazoo, man. and I'm going to go into var osec etsy list. And if we ls this out, we see a few lists that come by default when you install the Wazoo manager. So let's now go ahead and create our list of, and I'll just call it common dash ports. So I'll just open that with a text editor, copy the contents that we have here and paste that there. So these are the common ports that we do not want to generate an alert on. Rather than generating a list of all the ports that we want to generate an alert, that would be a ton. Like right? the, the computer has a little over 65,000 ports. Uh, I really don't want to generate a list that big. So I would rather create a list on the approved ports and then our Wazoo ma rule will do an inverse match to say, hey, if it is not within this list, then we're going to trigger an alert. So it's much easier to take this approach rather than including all the ports that you would want to whitelist. But I suppose you could if you wanted to. And this is these are just the ports that I'm using. So uh, of course, you will need to customize these to fit your environment as your environment needs. And you will also notice the colon after every port here. Uh, that is also crucial. Uh, these are key value structures. Uh, in this list, we're not giving a value, but you can do more with that. And I've linked to Wazoo's uh, CDB list uh, within their documentation, within the meeting post as well. So feel free to start kind of exploring more. But in this instance, we don't, in, in this tutorial, we don't need to do a value. We just need to worry about our key, which is going to be our ports. So we have port 21 for FTP, port 25 for SMTP, uh, we see 53 for DNS. So I'll go ahead and save that file out. And let's first, and let's now change our ownership and permissions of this file. So I'll just run these two commands here. And now let's instruct Wazoo to load the list. So I'm going to open up our var osec etc osec.conf. I will search for the list string. And here under our rule set block, we will see our list. So we see our default ones that Wazoo includes at default. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a new entry and copy this value there and paste that there. I will now save that off and restart our Wazoo manager. And now once it restarts, we'll be able to view it within the web UI and we'll also see a .cdb extension be generated. And if I jump into our Wazoo web UI and go to management CDB list, we will see our list has been created here and we see our values. Once you've added this list to Wazoo, you can add your new entries from the web UI if you want. So I could add another port here. If I wanted to save that off and restart, that would add our key to our list. You could also do it from the command line as well. Um, so whatever is up to you. So, all right, so we got that now. Now let's go ahead and create our Wazoo rule. And if you are following along, please do make sure you grab our advanced uh, Wazoo detection rules from our repo so you guys will have uh, this rule group here that we are going to match on because we know a network connection happens with a sysmon event three. We have our sysmon event three rule file already, and we are going to add this child rule to that because we only want this rule to be analyzed if a network connection has been made. And when a network connection has been made, a sysmon event three rule is triggered. So within Wazoo, I will go into management rules, add our new rule file or manage rules, I mean. Uh, custom rules, and I will select my sysmon event three rule file. So I'll go ahead and open that up and I'll just scroll down to the bottom here. So again, we want this rule to be analyzed. The rule that just matched previously was within the group sysmon event three, which we see all of our above rules. 
have our Sysmon Event 3 tag here. So that is telling Wazoo, when am I going to compare this rule against the log that I just received? We are then saying, I want you to compare the value that's within this field name here. So our when.eventData.destination port. So this is going to be the field name that will hold the value of the destination port. So here we see our Sysmon Event 3. We see our destination port. So in this example, connected out to 443. And here we have our field name here. You'll notice that we are omitting the data underscore. Uh, that will need to be done for your rule as well. But if you are writing to a different field name, then when event data destination port, you will just need to change that accordingly on your end. So this is fully customizable, so it can be whatever you want. But I'm telling Wazoo, hey, I want you to take the value within this field and compare that against our common ports list. So here we are pointing to the location of our common ports list. Note a, a few things to notice. We are giving a path of etc slash list. If you if you're following this tutorial step for step, then you will follow this exact same path as well. And you'll also notice we're not doing the dot cdb extension. We don't have to. Wazoo is going to take care of that for us. So this will we'll just reference it, reference it as our common dash ports. And we are also setting this to a level of 10. So that all looks good. I'm going to go ahead and save this off. And I will restart, go back to our post and let's go ahead and actually like sim and, and simulate an attack. So I'm going to run this PowerShell code here that is going to reach out to our command and control server at evil.sockfortress.co on port 8888. So this, it is then going to download a sandcat.exe file, which is a uh, malicious executable that allows us to run pretty much anything. But the goal of this is to first simulate, is to first spot, hey, a network connection has been made to an abnormal port. So let's go ahead and copy this PowerShell. Do not run this yourself. Uh, this is just for a demo purpose so you've been warned and i'll paste that in there and we'll go ahead and kick that off and then now that that's run let's go ahead and jump back into grafana and let's see if we can spot some magic and sure enough we see we see our rule trigger okay so we see network connection to uncommon port by powershell we can say oh that's pretty suspicious and if we open this guy up we see that evil.sockfortress.co resolved to this IP address, and we see it can establish connection out to port 8888. And PowerShell was the guy that invoked that. So that's that's pretty suspicious. If we refresh this again, let's see what else is kind of going on here. We also see a binary has been dropped in the user's public folder. So if we open this guy out up, we see, again, PowerShell was a process that invoked our download of this file, our sandcat.go.windows.exe. Now starting to kind of piece this all together. So we first saw a network connection go out to that, to our evil.sockfortress.co, which resolved to an IP address of this 5.161. So we can now kind of paint the picture of, hey, my endpoint downloaded a malicious file and it downloaded it from this guy here. Now I can update my firewall rules to, to block any endpoints from establishing connections out to this IP address. We now have a better, we now have better evidence to act quickly. And all this was, was triggered by us first, us first getting alerted that, hey, we've seen a, endpoint reach establish a network connection on an on, on an on an uncommon port so it helps us quickly spot potentially suspicious or malicious activity that we can drill into even further and this is a great detection mechanism to add to your seam stack so that's going to wrap it up for today's video if you haven't registered for the capture the flag challenge please do so for your chance to win a 50 dollars gift card at the end of the month i appreciate you guys hanging out with me and i will see you in the next one